Hi everyone, I'm back with sessions 59 and the topic of discussion is the patient with dysphagia and the care plan. That will include this video of course, the patient with dysphagia, causes of dysphagia, tube feeding, aspiration pneumonia, the care plan. And at the end I'll have some helpful information for you where you can access more than when you're through it watching this video. So let's get started. Here's the patient with dysphagia. This patient's name is Josh, and he was involved in a car accident and has difficulty swallowing. Tube feeding was ordered by the doctor. The care plan will reflect dysphagia and the potential for aspiration. Now dysphagia really just refers to difficulty swallowing, and it may be caused for various reasons. Many times when we have patients who have a brain injury, they will ultimately wind up with some degree of dysphagia. And one person might be able to you know, get by with uh, some soft food. Some other person may not be able to swallow at all. Typically what happens, a swallowing evaluation is done. Uh, the doctor usually orders that, of course, and that will determine exactly how much that patient can swallow and what kind of diet would be appropriate. Let's talk about difficulty swallowing, which I said already is dysphagia. It may occur for a number of reasons, trauma to the brain, a stroke, esophageal cancer, anorexia, multiple sclerosis, patient on mechanical ventilation, I don't have to tell you, cannot really swallow any food and more. Because people who have brain injuries, uh, they have might have damage to their cranial nerves. We know that there are 12 pairs. And the cranial nerves nine and 10 are those two very special nerves that are involved in gagging and swallowing. So if there's any damage to those two nerves, it is gonna be very difficult for that patient to continue to swallow as normal. And so a swallowing evaluation is usually ordered by the doctor. And once this is done, the doctor can determine, well, this, the occupational therapist usually does it and can determine exactly what that patient is able to swallow and whether or not liquid diets or maybe a uh, soft mechanical whatever the case might be is appropriate now let's go on to some of the types of feeding tubes um, the typical sort of feeding tube is usually the nasogastric but then for lo more long-term feeding they might put in what is called a peg which is a percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy tube this is done but for patients who are unable to eat or drink and will require enteral feeding over a long period of time. Here are some of the concerns when you have a patient who have tube feeding, regardless of whether it's nasogastric or from a peg. Aspiration pneumonia should be a real concern. Here are some helpful hints if you have a patient on tube feeding. You should follow your MD orders very carefully. Check the lung sounds for bowel, uh, or, or bowel or lung sounds, and it would be appropriate to find out if there, the, anything is wrong with them. Then you check for abdominal distension, which is another sign that the fluid is just not going the way it should. And you follow your MD's orders. What it is, when patients are on tube feeding, sometimes they may have difficulty absorbing tube feedings. One of the ways that you'll find that out is typically the doctor will tell you to check for residuals. And if the residuals are very high, you follow his instructions. Well, what you should do, follow the doctor's instruction so you will know exactly what you're meant to do if, if the uh, residuals are high. And by checking the breath sounds, you can always tell, too, if there are other problems developing, like tube feeding going into the lungs or so. Anyway, for more helpful information on the care plan, if you go to dearnurses.com, you will find information on care planning. It's called Care Plan, what is it? And it walks you through um, a tremendous amount of helpful information on uh, when you do a care plan. And also remember, you must follow your institution's policies and procedures because care plans are very individualized. There's no carte blanche, one care plan fits all, because you have to know your doctor's diagnosis and work from there with your nursing diagnosis. And last but not least, sessions 14, references enteral and parental nutrition, dysphagia and aspiration pneumonia. 
there are some very helpful topics here. This is a related video and it will talk about enteral nutrition and indications for it, aspiration pneumonia, parental nutrition and indications and complications. And that should be a great help if you really want to learn more about this particular topic that we are on. Hope you've enjoyed learning. Have a great weekend.